Hello and welcome to Mary Live. This is Dr. Mark Maravalli, my friends in Jesus and Mary. From 1959 to 1978, a period of approximately 20 years, the powerful and beautiful, the sublime and sanctifying message and apparitions of Jesus, divine mercy, to St. Faustina was prohibited. It was prohibited by the church based on a communication uh, from the local bishop, and it remained prohibited, again, for almost 20 years. What led to the reversal of that prohibition? By what was then called the Holy Office, then the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, and now the Dicastery for the Doctrine of Faith, that is, the, the Vatican Commission that oversees these things. What led to the change? Well, really, one man a man named Carol Boitiwa, who would become St. John Paul II. But before he was St. John Paul II, he brought to the attentions of, of church authorities his conviction that these apparitions, these messages, deserved a new examination. They deserved a revisitation, if you will, because of their beauty and efficacy and promises of graces for the church and the world. Had it not been for Carol Wojtyla, it's very doubtful uh, if the, that prohibition would have been removed, if, if, if ever. And so what does that tell us? It tells us, first of all, that Bishop and then Cardinal Wojtyla was obedient during the time of the prohibition, but he brought it to legitimate church authorities. In fact, ironically, the cause for the canonization of St. Faustina was allowed to continue even while the prohibition of the apparition and the messages uh, was promulgated by the CDF. A rather interesting inconsistency. The point is the church allows for the call for reevaluation while still remaining in obedience to whatever the particular discipline of the church, the, the, the directive uh, that is issued at any given time. So it's with that context that I would like to invite you to join me to revisit the reported Amsterdam apparitions in total obedience. And, and let's go very briefly through um, the ecclesiastical history, and what led us to the present point. So these are reported apparitions from 1945 through 1959. And this happens to the Dutch woman, Ida Perdeman, uh, some 56 apparitions uh, through that time. Uh, but of course, she submits everything to her bishop. Now, the first bishop of Harlem, at that time Harlem, Amsterdam, would be the, the newer designation of the diocese. The first bishop was originally skeptical, and he reported his skepticism to the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith. Then the bishop changed his position and became very positive, especially closer to his death, uh, very emphatic about how he believed these to be true. But for whatever reason, the congregation uh, in 1974 uh, refused to change its position, which prohibited public devotion based on the bishop's first um, report. So that's the 1974 status. And then we move forward 10 to 20 years, and we see that the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith modifies its position. And through communication between the congregation, the Vatican congregation, and the local bishop, the congregation makes clear that it is open for public devotion, that that would be a possible designation by the local bishop. And so in 1996, the local bishop, in fact, officially conveys to the people, after this consultation with the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, that you may believe in conscience, uh, according to the individual conscience, uh, the messages and apparitions of the Lady of All Nations, that it is worthy of public devotion, which was what was specified in 96. Then we go forward to 2002. And in 2002, the new bishop recognizes, in essence, 
the supernatural character of the Amsterdam message and apparitions. I mean, there can always be some human uh, dimensions in any approved apparition, uh, but in essence, the, the Bishop of 2002 recognizes it in what we commonly call a, a declaration of uh, constat de supernaturalitate. And that remains for some 18 years. Then we go forward to December of 2020, and the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith um, requests the new local bishop to make a new statement regarding the Amsterdam apparitions. And essentially in that new statement of 2020, the new bishop uh, seeks to recall the approval uh, that was given in 2002 and in, in essence returning it to the 1974 status, but allowing public devotion. Uh, it's, it's very clear that the new bishop's statement in 2020 says you can pray the prayer, which of course comes from the reported apparition. You can have prayer days of the Lady of All Nations, which the new local bishop has participated in in, in, a, in a very prominent way. Uh, and you can use the title Lady of All Nations. So, but you're, you're not to spread the messages as if it were, as it was previously under the status of an approved apparition. So, that brings us to the present position, if you will. And I strongly encourage you, take, take 10 minutes and go to AmsterdamApparitions.com. Okay? And the reason I recommend you to this particular uh, website is because it really goes through the facts of the present status of Amsterdam, and it also gives uh, a, an outstanding summary and again, this is all within total obedience to the newer 2020 statement. Uh, even though there were no reasons given for the uh, removal of the 2002 status. In fact, there's a pretty good canonical discussion uh, that says, is it even possible for a new bishop to revoke a previous bishop's uh, statement? Uh, the new bishop can make his own statement, that's clear enough. But for example, at Fatima, if, if, a, if, if the Bishop of Fatima today sought to revoke the approval statement of the Bishop of 1930 of Fatima, does he have the ability to do that? Well, it doesn't seem clear in the Vatican documents uh, that he would, especially the 1978 documents by the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith. Now, the Congregation has the power to do that. The Vatican has the power. But whether a local bishop can overturn a previous bishop statement is still uh, very much under discussion, and, and it seems uh, somewhat dubious to hold that that is possible. At any rate, the, 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 the summary that's given on Amsterdam apparitions, which I, I really direct you to, and if you forget the title, uh, we're putting a link on Mother of All Peoples uh, to go to those AmsterdamApparitions.com website with the permission of Amsterdam Apparitions, because the summary is such an excellent job of A, remaining in total obedience, but B, also telling the story uh, of the events. Once again, this is absolutely required for any uh, petition of a re-examination. You have to have the ink, right? You have to have the story. You have to have the events to see, uh, like with Divine Mercy, whether it's worthy of a re-evaluation by church authorities. So you know, once again, that's AmsterdamApparitions.com, highly recommend its summary. Uh, and I'm going to try to at least bring up some of the salient points of the summary here, uh, but there's far more in terms of, of what's given in terms of the prophetic dimension of the message. So I want to start just with a very important uh, line that comes from the reported Amsterdam apparitions early in the series of the apparitions. So we're still uh, early in the 1940s, mid-1940s. And Our Lady reportedly says, quote, my signs are in my words. And she'll repeat that two or three times. My signs are in my words. That's why the words are so important to, again, not to promulgate as if it's an approved apparition that's been revoked, that's been recalled, but to examine the message the reported message 
to see if there are any sign values in her words. <clears throat> so in that dimension, my signs are in my words. Let me very briefly go through some of the prophecies and predictions that were given to this middle-aged uh, Dutch woman who, as um, a CIA instructor, said this little Dutch woman knew more than the combined knowledge of the American FBI and the Russian KGB. So what was she saying in the 1940s and early 1950s that 70 years ago uh, have still a, a, a very critical relevance? So, for example, um, she, she prophesies in a very first message the end of World War II in Holland. And in fact, on May 5th of 1945, uh, World War II ended as Our Lady uh, reportedly, I'm going to use reportedly just in, again in deference uh, to uh, the, 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 the 2020 statement here. Uh, but she predicts the end of World War II, which takes place in Holland. She then makes reference to Israel. The words are Israel will rise again and predicts the return of the independent state of Israel, which would happen in 1948. She also prophesies in 1945 that um, there would be a red flag flying over China. That would uh, take place uh, four years later, even though at the time in 1945, there was no indication that uh, Mao was going to take over China. Shanghai Shek had uh, a strong uh, control of the country. And these continue. Uh, there is a reference to an Arab, well, what we would call now the Arab Spring. In 1947, a series of, of conflicts stemming out of Cairo that would lead to great Middle East instability. That, of course, takes place. Uh, what happened uh, within this last decade in terms of the uprising in Cairo that led to a lot of destabilizing factors in the rest of the Middle East. These continue. She has a vision of Korea. This is 1949 leading into 1950. And in this vision of Korea, she sees uh, a map of Korea with demarcations and a reference that the, uh, the violence in the uprising in Korea would be an omen for future concern for the world. And again, I'm paraphrasing these, uh, but we have, of course, the reality of North Korea today, uh, which had no indication of being a, a world threat or a nuclear threat uh, back in the late 1940s, early 1950s. Uh, and then you get a couple of very interesting prophecies, again, that no one had an indication that th these would be coming forward back in the late 40s, like climate change. Our Lady literally says, uh, quote, and nature will change too. Uh, there's reference to gender issues. She calls women to return to their womanliness and calls men to be soldiers of Christ and asking, where are the soldiers of Christ? Uh, almost in anticipation of some of the, uh, the, the gender dubiosity uh, that we're experiencing today. Uh, there's also a reference in the 1940s, early 1950s, to tension between China and Taiwan. Now, at that time, Taiwan was called Formosa, and there was not a tension between the two countries. Uh, and, and so that, again, is prophetic in ways that would not be easy to anticipate. Uh, there's also uh, uh, several references to conflict between Russia and Ukraine. And one apparition... Uh, again, all in the late 1940s, Our Lady is putting her hands, uh, almost as in a protective prayerful way, over the country of Ukraine. And then there's an explosion that comes from Russia where the visionary sees annihilation, sees destruction. Could that have been fulfilled with Chernobyl? Uh, or is it something still in the future? We don't know, but it clearly makes reference to a headline of today. Another headline of today, which could not have been anticipated in the 1940s, in the late 1940s, was the concern, Our Lady's concern for the spiritual state of Germany. She speaks, she, she says, it looks like the country of Germany is trying to wiggle out of its place. Now, what does that mean? It talks about uh, Germany, not only in terms of geopolitical elements, 
but in terms of ecclesial elements. There's one message where Our Lady says, reportedly, that the Pope will have to send directives to Germany, and the context is, is the church, otherwise Germany will be lost. So, it, you don't need me to tell you that's exactly what's happening right now with the, with the great challenges of the German Synod. Um, there's, and again, I'm only making reference to a few of the many, many prophecies. Twice, Ida receives from, reportedly from Our Lady, the date of the death of the Holy Father. And this happened with Pope Pius XII. Uh, this is nine months before he died. And the same thing with uh, Pope Pius, Pope uh, Paul VI. Just a quick comment on that. Uh, some could say, well, uh, yeah, obviously a lady couldn't come up with all this stuff on her own, but how do we know it's not Satan? Well, guess what? Satan does not know the future of when people are going to die. That's, that's a divine prerogative. Uh, Satan doesn't know that. But you'd be right to conclude it's impossible that a little Dutch woman who was an accountant and who was psychologically examined uh, and was found to be positively dull, unimaginative, but completely sound of mind and body, it's impossible that this lady would come up with this stuff on her own. So it does bespeak a sign value uh, in her words. She also uh, reportedly speaks about uh, a man on the moon. She predicts the Second Vatican Council. She uh, speaks about a great religious spiraling down. She speaks about uh, economic tensions between America and Europe, which we're seeing happening uh, right now. I mean, there's headlines about that and in terms of trade statements that have happened with the Biden administration and the EU is concerning whether they have to, in, in turn, uh, put on sanctions. Uh, these were inconceivable in the 40s, especially after uh, World War II and the unity of, of England and France. Uh, with the United States. She also speaks about uh, a new Pentecost, if you will, a, a, a need for a new descent of the Holy Spirit for the church in the world, and that that would be the only means of saving the church for the challenges uh, that would be coming. My friends, I'm not going to go through all of these by any means, but uh, these are all documented, and these were all documented, uh, again, in some cases, 40, 50, 60 years before they were fulfilled. I think that leads the logical mind to, to ask the question, why? Why would Our Lady give so many reported predictions and, and, and prophecies? What would be the purpose? Well, the answer is quite simple. It's called credibility. She's giving signs in her words, according to the message, precisely to believe in the credibility of the message as something beyond uh, both human and even preternatural, even, even diabolical knowledge that would serve an acceptance of the message. Well, what's the backbone of the reported message of Amsterdam? The backbone is, without question, the request for a fifth and final Marian dogma. That until Mary is proclaimed dogmatically by the Pope, as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate under the title Mother of All Peoples or Lady of All Nations, until that happens, there will not be peace in the world. Now, that's rather stark and, and precise, but it's absolutely what is repeated in the reported message. Uh, Our Lady reportedly says in the message that these three concepts, co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate, are to be seen combined into one concept, and that is her role as spiritual mother. So it's not a triple dogma. It's a reference of Our Lady's role as mother of all peoples, in which she enacts this role in three prominent ways. As the co-redemptrix, who uniquely part uh, participates with Jesus in the obtaining of graces. As the mediatrix of all graces, the participating with Jesus, the one mediator, in the distribution of the graces. And as advocate, participating with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, who Jesus calls advocate in Scripture, to both release grace upon humanity, but also to protect and defend humanity at a time of difficulty. So, does this message merit 
a reexamination, a reevaluation, something similar to what happened with divine mercy. I believe it does. And unless one can come up with how this woman got so many prophecies uh, correct, and there's no prophecy that's that, that that's a miss either uh, in in the body of the reported messages, does this not lead to the possibility of seeing this as a truly heavenly message? Or again, always within obedience that church authorities should rightfully re-examine this message. So I want to end by praying the prayer, which we typically do, of the Lady of All Nations. Once again, this prayer is absolutely approved. In fact, the bishop, uh, the new bishop, the, the current bishop of Amsterdam, uh, offered a beautiful homily on the, the relevance of the prayer right now to the church and the world right now that we need a new descent of the Holy Spirit. We need Our Lady's intercession to help us battle degeneration, disaster, and war, the three headlines of today. Um, and so it's completely uh, legitimate and appropriate to both pray this prayer and to spread the prayer. It's also something, according to the reported message, is a prayer that prepares the way for the fifth dogma. So let's pray this prayer. And, and if you need copies of this, give us an email, mary at motherofallpeoples.com. Just list your name and address, how many prayer cards you want, English or Spanish, and we'll get them out to you free of charge within the week. But I'd ask you to pray this prayer with me now for church authorities, that their hearts may be open according to God's perfect providence. Their hearts may be open to revisit the Amsterdam apparitions, the reported apparitions at this stage, to see if indeed they are worthy of greater credibility and in fact, whether they provide the remedy, not just a remedy, but the remedy that will lead to peace in the world. That's what the reported message says, that only when Our Lady is proclaimed as the mother of all peoples, including co-redemptrix, mediatrix, advocate roles, only then will she be able to intercede for, quote, peace, true peace for the world. So let's pray this prayer together for church authorities, that the Holy Spirit will guide them in a potential revisiting of the Amsterdam apparitions. As we pray in the name of the Father and Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from degeneration, disasters, and war. May the Lady of all nations, the Blessed Virgin Mary, be our advocate. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much. God bless you all.